Welcome guys sa accounting.com. Kami po ay nagbabalik para na naman sa isang bagong series na pinakamagatang Law and Business Organizations. Sa series na ito, tatalakayin natin ng mga corporations, SRC and corporate governance, cooperatives at partnerships. Para umbisahan ang series na ito, mag-uumpisa tayo sa Law on Private Corporations at ito ay base sa ating pinakabago na uh, Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines or also known as the Republic Act number no. 11232. So sa ating first video, tatalakayin po natin ang definition ng isang corporation, the different classes of a corporation, pagdedetermine ng nationality ng mga corporation at corporate juridical personality ng corporation and instances of piercing the corporate veil. So, bago ang lahat, inaanyayahan ko po muna kayo na mag-subscribe sa ating channel para kayo po ay laging updated sa ating mga upcoming video. Meron din kaming ire-ready na premium version ng series na ito. Ito po ay maglalaman ng maraming additional features. Para sa detalye, maglalagay po kami ng link sa description. Narito naman ang mga different learning outcomes or mga bagay na dapat na pa, uh, naintindihan natin after nating mapanood ang video na ito. So, number one, kailangan alam natin kung paano i-define ang isang corporation. Number two, alamin natin ang mga different classes of a corporation. Number three, alamin natin kung ano ba yung mga different tests para uh, alamin ang nationality ng isang corporation. And number four, pag-aaralan natin maigi kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng corporate juridical personality at kung ano ba yung mga certain cases wherein we disregard this juridical personality. Okay, para umpisahan, alamin natin muna kung ano ang definition ng isang corporation. So, according to the Revised Corporation Code, Section 2, a corporation is an artificial being created by operation of law, having the right of succession and the powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law or incidental to its, to its existence. Okay, so based from this definition, magka-come up tayo with the different characteristics. Uh, simply, ibe-breakdown lang natin siya. Okay? At we will come up with these four characteristics of a corporation. Um, so, para explain yung number one, what is an artificial being? So, consider po natin ang corporation as an artificial being. Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng artificial being? Sa mata kasi ng batas, may dalawang uri ng persons. We have a natural person and an artificial person. Pag sinabi nating natural person, tayo yun. Okay, as a human being, that yung totoong tao, kumbaga. Pag artificial being naman or artificial person, usually ito yung mga businesses. So, ang example niya na isang corporation. Okay? So, uh, bilang pagiging isang artificial being, a corporation has a personality that is separate and distinct from its owner. So, ang corporation ay hindi uh, hindi pareho dun sa mga owners niya at ganun din yung owners. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, a corporation can be sued by someone. Okay? Pero, not suing the owners directly. Okay? So, yun po ang use ng pagiging artificial or pagkakaroon ng art, uh, separate personality ng isang corporation. Okay? So, pangalawang, ano natin, pangalawang characteristic, a corporation is created by operation of law. Okay? So, unlike other business organization such as partnership and a sole proprietorship na napag-aralan nyo nga sa inyong accounting subjects, uh, iba po ang way para makreate ang isang corporation. Pag sole proprietor kasi and partnership, um, simple lang. Kung gusto mo mag-start, pwede ka na mag-start. Sa sole proprietorship, total mag-isa ka lang naman. Ikaw, lang, ikaw na ang magde-decide nun. Okay? Kung gusto mo nang mag-start ng business. Okay? Pero pag partnership naman, um, it is composed of two or more persons. So therefore, dapat yung two or more persons na yun, uh, kailangan meron silang meeting of minds na tinatawag. Okay? So, uh, kung i-recall din natin, ang partnership po ay isang contract. At alam naman natin kung ano yung mga different requisites ng contract. So as long as na-meet po yung different uh, requisites ng isang contract, tuloy po ang partnership or mabubuo na po yung tinatawag nating partnership. However, 
sa part ng corporation, hindi po ganun basta-basta nakakreate ang isang corporation. Hindi po basta-basta na magtitipon-tipon yung mga tao, okay? Mag-organize sila ng isang business at tatawagin nilang itong isang corporation or, di ba, i-consider nila itong isang corporation. Hindi po. Okay? Sabi dito, only the state through the Securities and Exchange Commission can grant a business license to operate as a corporation po. Okay? So, may mga formalities po tayong pagdadaanan at that's the time na makakakreate po tayo ng corporation unlike partnership and sole proprietorship na kayang-kaya mo siyang gawin kaagad. Okay? Next, a corporation has the right of succession. So, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? So, our, a corporation continues to exist for a period for which it has been formed regardless of the changes in the ownership. So, pag sole proprietor, namatay yung sole proprietor, uh, usually, namatay na rin yung business. Okay? I mean, nam namatay yung separate personality ng business na yun. Okay? Kumbaga, along with the pagkamatay ng owner, namatay din yung personality ng business. Pero syempre, may mga times na pwedeng ipagpatuloy ito ng kanyang uh, mga mga ears, okay? Or yung mga magmamana ng business na yun. Ganon din yung partnership, okay? Kapag namatay ang isang partner in a, ang isang general partner in a partnership, usually, madidissolve po yung partnership. Unless, di ba, i-continue yun ng mga natitirang partnership. Pero yung, uh, yung per, uh, juridical personality ng isang partnership, yung previous juridical personality niya bago mamatay yung isang partner, uh, parang different na siya from the personality after, di ba? After mamatay ng isang uh, partner. Okay? So, pero sa isang corporation, medyo matibay po. Okay? Matibay po ang corporation. Kahit na mamatay yung isa sa mga stockholders or isa sa mga directors or officers or kahit sino man within the corporation, hindi po nadidissolve ang isang corporation. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin po ang pag-operate ng isang corporation despite the ano, death or uh, incapacity or whatsoever ng mga uh, owners ng isang corporation. Okay? So, yun po yung tinatawag nating right of succession. And lastly, okay, may mga binanggit din tayo last time na, yun nga, ang corporation po, okay, meron siyang mga powers, di ba? Powers that are expressly granted by the law, okay, or inherent to its existence, okay? So, Diyan po papasok yung tinatawag din nating doctrine of limited capacity. So, sabi dito, a corporation has limited capacity. So, unlike partnership and sole proprietorship, uh, ang mga kayang gawin lang ng isang corporation ay kung ano lang yung sinabi ng batas. Okay? Samantalang, ang sole proprietorship and partnership and any other types of business uh, business uh, forms, di ba? as long as hindi siya contrary to law, morals, public order, public policy, etc. Okay siya. Okay siyang gawin. May power sila na gawin yun. Pero ang corporation po, hindi. Kung ano lang yung nakasulat sa revised corporation code or any other special laws na uh, nagugovern sa specific corporation na yun, yun lang po ang masusunod. And also, with the other powers such as implied powers and inherent powers, which will be uh, discussed uh, in detail sa mga susunod pang video po natin. Okay? So, that ends the ano, um, topic of defining the corporation. So, punta naman tayo sa different classes of a corporation. So, number one, okay, meron tayong tinatawag na major classes of a corporation. Okay? Nag-base po tayo dito sa Revised Corporation Code Section 3. So, under this specific section, meron po tayong dalawang uri ng corporation. Number one, a stock corporation, and number two, a non-stock corporation. Actually, simple lang ang pagkakaiba ng dalawang to. Ang stock corporation po, nag issue po siya ng tinatawag nating stocks or shares. While a non-stock corporation, hindi po siya nag issue ng stocks or shares. And usually, um, hindi po siya for profit. Okay? So, an ano nga ba yun? So, stock corporation, so ayan nga, meron tayong illustration dito. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, oh, may mga tao, at ang tawag sa mga to, mga shareholders, di ba? Okay? So, bawat shareholders merong share from the corporation. Okay? And, ang isang tao, pwedeng may mga, ta may mga shareholders na konti lang yung share, may mga shareholders na medyo marami-rami din yung shares. Therefore, uh, giving them a, ano, parang kumbaga more power within the corporation. 
and more voting rights within the corporation. Okay? Samantalang, kapag non-stock po, wala pong concept ng share. So, lahat po ng mga uh, tao dyan or mga owners dyan ay pantay-pantay. Okay? So, wala kasing conce concept ng share para maungusan mo ang isang tao. Di ba? Actually, hindi shareholder ang tawag natin sa mga yan. Ang tawag po natin dyan, mga members. Okay? So, yun yung counterpart ng shareholder. Okay? Uh, members, ang tawag sa counterpart ng shareholder sa mga non-stock corporations. Okay? So next, let's talk about another, okay, classes of corporation. This time naman, according to its purpose, okay? So meron tayong apat. So alamin natin kung ano yung mga yan. Unahin mo natin yung public corporation. So based on the corporation law or Republic Act 1459 under Section 3. So iba rin po ito, ah. Okay? Corporation po, law po ito. Parang medyo luma na to pero hindi ibig sabihin ay um, hindi na siya applicable. Okay? So, pwede pa rin siya magamit. So, under the corporation law, section 3, okay, dinify niya po ang isang public corporation as those organized, form or organized for the government of a portion of the state which have their purpose, the general good and welfare. Okay? So, ang purpose po ng mga public corporation ay for the general good and welfare. Okay? Actually, hindi po natin ito magiging topic uh, dito sa ating video series na ito. Ang magiging topic po natin primarily is itong susunod. Yung mga tinatawag nating private corporations. Okay? So, these are those form for some private purposes. Okay? So, ayan. Okay? Yung mga binabanggit po sa under-revised corporation code specifically ang pinaka talagang tinutukoy niya doon ay yung mga, yung mga tinatawag nating private corporations. Okay? So, unlike public, ang purpose niya po ay for private purposes. At ang pinakasikat dyan na purpose is yung, ano nga, yung, syempre, for profit. Okay? Pero, syempre, depende rin sa uh, industry na kinabibilangan ng isang corporation. May mga certain uh, purposes din tayo na uh, ipoprovide or pwede nating pagpilian kapag magka-create na tayo or magre-register na tayo ng isang corporation. Okay? Pero generally, uh, private corporations are ano, form or organized for profit. Okay? Next, yung tinatawag nating okay? Yung tinatawag nating quasi-public corporations. So, ano daw mga quasi-public corporations? Okay? These are private, actually private corporations din tong mga to. However, they are supported uh, by the government in the performance of public duties. Usually, sila yung mga nagpa-perform ng mga public, uh, uh, public duties such as uh, mga public utilities, electric, water, and transportation. Okay? And last but not the least, meron tayong tinatawag na government-owned and controlled corporations. So, ano nga ba itong mga ito? Oh, from the ano, title itself, ito po yung mga corporations na nagpagmamayari ng government. Okay? So, paano natin malalaman? Kapag yung Philippine government ang may-ari ng at least majority of the outstanding capital stock. Okay? So, para alamin kung ano yung mga different um, GOCs sa ating uh, bansa, pwede nyong i-visit ano, uh, yung website ng OGCC.com or that, that .gov. Okay? So, next. Punta naman tayo sa mga other classes of a corporation. So, marami pang different classes of a corporation. Pwede natin itong uh, ma-organize into these different ano, categories. Okay? So, number one, our letter A. Okay, meron tayong corporations according to yung control na kaya niyang ma-exert. So, um, later on, kapag napunta na kayo sa mga advanced accounting subjects nyo, pag-aaralan nyo yung mga ano, di ba? Yung mga yung mga corporations na na merong ano merong mga subsidiaries and yung accounting di ba accounting tungkol doon mga business combinations whatsoever okay so according to control we have a parent and a subsidiary parent kapag siya yung kumokontrol sa isang corporation okay so isang corporation na merong investment sa isang corporation so siya yung parent kapag um, let's say meron siyang more than 50 meron siyang majority ng stocks Okay, nagmamayari siya ng majority ng stocks. Ibig sabihin, siya yung parent ng corporation na yun. And subsidiary naman ang tawag dun sa corporation na kinokontrol ng isang parent. Okay? Letter B, legal status. 
So we have a de jure corporation and a de facto corporation. Pag de jure, nag-comply siya with all the necessary requirements. However, kapag de facto, actually, pag de facto corporation, meron pa rin itong juridical personality. However, may mga certain uh, siguro uh, formalities or mga requisites or mga tawag dito. Hindi naman requisites, yung parang kumbaga mga formalities na lang eh, na hindi na sunod or natapos ng uh, isang corporation habang nagpa-file siya for incorporation. Okay? And letter letter C, loss of incorporation. So ito naman yung ano, um pag domestic ibig sabihin Philippine Corporation po 'yan. Pag uh, foreign naman, uh nag-operate siya within the Philippines pero hindi siya na-organize under Philippine laws. Okay? Later on pag-aaralan natin kung uh, ano ba yung paano ba i-determine yung nationality ng isang corporation. Letter D, number of persons. So, corporation aggregate kapag there are uh, multiple stockholders and corporation sole kapag meron lang isa. So, it's different from a one-person corporation which will be discussed on uh, yung mga susunod nating mga video. So, iba po yan. Iba po yung corporation sole. So, letter E, public or not. So, open corporation ba siya or closed corporation ba siya? Kapag open corporation, kahit na stranger to the, ano, kung sino man yung mga nag-organize, pwedeng maka-acquire ng stock ng corporation. Pag close naman, limited lang po yan. Okay? Letter F, charitable or not. Elimusinari kapag yung um, corporation po natin ay na-organize for charitable purposes. Pag other than charitable purposes naman, we have a civil corporation. And lastly, religious or not. Ecclesiastical po ang isang corporation kapag ito ay na-organize for religious purposes. And ang tawag natin kapag other than religious purposes ay isang lay corporation. Okay? So next, ngayon naman, mag -deal, i -deal, uh, we will deal with uh, a very special type of corporation which is what we call yung corporation by prescription. Ano mga ba itong corporation by prescription? A corporation that has existed longer than the memory of a man can remember and is presumed to have acquired its juridical personality from that long time ago. Okay? So, itong mga klaseng corporation na to, ang assumption dito dahil dere-derecho pa rin silang nag-ooperate ngayon at walang makaalala kung kailan ba talaga nag-start yung corporation na yan at ang naging assumption na lang is ano, um, merong batas dati na binigyan ng juridical personality yung specific corporation na yan. So, kapag dere-derechong nag-operate ang isang corporation at parang kumbaga walang batas na parang uh, tumuligsa dito, okay, tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya. Okay? Parang kumbaga mas, ano na siya eh, mas, mas, ano na siya, mas matanda na siya kaysa dun sa batas. So, ano, hindi, hindi siya pwedeng pagbawalan ng batas na sasabihin nung SEC, oh, hindi ka nag-file ng articles of incorporation sa akin. Eh, mas matanda na nga yung corporation na yan eh. nag -e exist na yan before ka pa mag-exist, SEC, parang ganun. So, yung mga ganong klaseng corporation ay tinatawag nating corporation by prescription. At yung mga ganong klaseng prescription, hindi na po sila required. Okay? Hindi po sila required mag-file ng articles of incorporation. Okay? Pero syempre, required pa rin sila na sumunod sa batas. Okay? So, yun po yung Corporation by prescription. Next, punta na tayo sa pag-determine ng nationality ng isang corporation. Okay? So, kanina na discuss natin yung dalawang uh, uri ng isang corporation based on yung kung anong batas ba siya na organize. So, we have a domestic corporation and a foreign corporation. By the way, pag-aaralan natin in detail din ang foreign corporation pagdating natin sa Revised Corporation Code Section 140. So, for the purposes of this code, uh, bago, na, bago tayo pumunta sa actual na pagdedetermine ng nationality ng isang corporation, alamin muna natin kung ano ba ang meaning talaga ng isang foreign corporation. So, sabi dito, for the purposes of this code, a foreign corporation is one form organized or under uh, or existing under laws other than, okay, other than those of the Philippine laws, okay? Meaning, ang isang domestic corporation ay na form, na organized, babalik ta rin lang natin, di ba? Or existing under the laws of the Philippines. Okay? So, yun ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa. Okay? Domestic, um, 
na organized under Philippine laws, foreign na organized under laws that are uh, other than those of the Philippines. Okay? So, from that definition, maalalaman na natin kaagad kung ano nga ba or paano ba natin ma-determine ang nationality ng isang corporation. Simple lang. Di ba? Alamin natin kung anong batas or saang batas ba siya na organize. Okay? At ang tawag sa so specific test of nationality na yon is yung tinatawag nating incorporation test. Okay? Actually, ito yung ginagamit natin primarily in determining the nationality of a corporation. Okay? So, sabi dito, the primary test under Philippine jurisdiction in determining the nationality of a corporation is the incorporation test, wherein a corporation is considered a national of the country under whose laws it was incorporated. So, ang source po natin dyan ay yung SEC Opinion Number 1202. Okay? So, pwede nyo siyang ma-google ma search para makita nyo yung ano, talagang detailed, okay? detailed opinion ng SEC. Okay. However, okay, may mga times na kailangan natin ng other tests, okay? Or mga sub-tests, kumbaga. Okay? Other than the incorporation test. At medyo magiging komplikado na siya from now on. Dahil, yun nga, very simple lang itong incorporation test. Kung saan siya na-incorporate, yun yung kanyang nationality. Okay? So, pag-aaralan natin is, ano, yung additional sub-tests. Okay? Unahin mo natin yung tinatawag nating control test. Pag sinabi nating control test, ito rin yung tinatawag nating liberal rule in determining the nationality of a corporation. Okay. This is a test used to determine the eligibility of a corporation which has foreign equity participation in its ownership structure to engage in nationalized or partly nationalized activities. So, ano tong nationalized, partly nationalized activities? So, later on, aalamin natin yung mga yan. Okay? Pero for now, ano bang sinasabi nitong control test muna? Sabi dito, if a corporation is at least 60% Filipino-owned, then all shares are considered as Filipino shares. Okay? So, yung other 40 shares, kahit na foreign shares sila, okay, or they are owned by foreigners, consider pa rin sila as Filipino, owned by Filipino. So, kapag namit mo yung 60%, okay, 60% Filipino equity, automatically, sa mata ng batas, under the control test, you will be considered as 100% Filipino. So, 100% domestic corporation ka. Okay? Pero, tandaan nyo, liberal rule lang ito. Liberal rule pa lang ito. It, ito yung hindi stricto na rule. Di ba? Okay? So, next, alamin natin kung ano ba tong sinasabi na nationalized or partly nationalized. Actually, ganito ka yan. Um, Kapag ang isang corporation ay hindi engaged dun sa mga nabanggit natin na yon, malamang-lamang ang gagamitin natin is itong incorporation test dahil ito yung primary test. So, wala tayong problema pag hindi siya engaged in nationalized or partly nationalized activities or industries, parang ganun. So, maya-maya pag-aaralan natin yon. Pero, kapag siya po ay engaged or kabilang or nag apply for ano being a corporation in this industry which have uh, ano, nationalized or partly nationalized activities, dito po natin i-implement uh, or gagamitin itong control test. And later on, meron pa tayong isang test na pag-aaralan which is mas strict to siya. Okay? So, ano ba itong mga nationalized and partly nationalized activities or industries? Actually, industries na lang kasi uh, itong mga industries na ito, uh, yung mga ginagawa nila ay yun nga, yun, yun yung activity, di ba? Partly nationalized, uh, wholly nationalized activities, okay? Pero ito yung mga industry, okay? So, for example, kapag ang isang corporation ay nag apply for, ano, itong industry na ito, yung magpapatayo ka ng isang corporation na mass media, okay, under the 1987 Constitution, okay, kailangan walang foreign equity, so, dapat 100% Filipino-owned. Okay? Kapag gagawa ka ng isang corporation in this industry, mass media, okay? 100% Filipino-owned po dapat. Okay? This is under 1987 Constitution. Pero itong mga to, itong mga listahan na ito, okay, makikita po natin siya dito. Uh, yung Foreign Investment Act of 1991 negative list. Okay? Pwede nyo siyang mag-google search and ipakikita ipapakita niya po lahat ng mga industries na ito. 
Actually, kumuha lang ng tayo ng tatlo. Okay? Number one, yun nga, mass media, no foreign equity. Kailangan 100% Filipino talaga siya. Ito naman, ito, private recruitment, whether for local or overseas employment, as mandate, mandated by ano, Presidential Decree Number 442. So, kailangan up to 25% lang ang pwedeng maging foreign equity. So, oh, at least 75% Filipino-owned po dapat ito. Okay? And ito naman, another example is ownership of private lands. Okay, so hindi na siya corporation. So, hindi naman na yung corporation. Okay, so ano lang, uh, eh, sing it lang natin. Okay. Yung ownership of private land, kailangan, okay, may mga tinatawag kasi tayong ano eh, co-ownership of lands. Okay? Kapag nagkakaroon ng co-ownership of lands, kailangan at least 60% nung land na yun ay owned by a Filipino. Okay? Pero uh, pag binisit nyo po itong mga different list na ito or yung negative list ng Foreign Investment Act, makikita nyo pa lahat ng mga different industries. So, uh, I, I, I highly recommend paki-visit po ito or paki-google search po itong Foreign Investment Act or baka uh, later on maglalagay tayo sa ating uh, description ng link. Okay? So next, okay. Punta na tayo sa Okay. Okay, so next punta na tayo sa last rule na pag-aaralan natin. So this is also called the tinat uh, grandfather rule or the strict rule, okay? Actually parang nga din to yung control test pero uh, ini-implement natin to in a more strict way. Okay, sabi dito, if a corporation is less than 60% Filipino-owned, then the corresponding percentage belonging to Filipino shall be the only share to be recorded as Filipino share. So, kapag less than siya, kapag 59%, o, ibig sabihin, yung corporation po natin ay 59% Filipino-owned. Unlike sa uh, control test, wherein kapag 60% or more siya, di ba, ang mangyayari is automatically magiging 100%. Okay, 100% Filipino-owned siya. So, ganito, tatandaan po natin. Ang grandfather rule ay um, ina-apply po natin every time there is a doubt okay, in terms of the foreign ownership of a certain uh, corporation applying for a nationalized or partly nationalized industry. Okay, very important po yun to secure uh, the Philippines. Okay, to secure the Philippines. Kasi itong mga specific industries na ito, medyo importante ito. Actually, importante itong mga industries nito para mapangalagaan yung welfare ng mga Filipinos. Okay? So, inulit ko, the grandfather rule is applied to corporations where the 60-40 uh, Filipino to foreign ownership is in doubt. Okay? So, to give you an idea or an illustration, meron tayong isang problem dito na nakaredy. Okay? So, Sahin natin, ABC Corporation is applying to engage in the manufacture of firearms. Kapag binisit nyo po yung Foreign Investment Act negative list, okay, malalaman nyo na kapag ang isang corporation ay nag apply sa ganitong klase ng industry, which is the manufacture of firearms, kailangan niya ng uh, at least 60% Filipino ownership or up to 40% foreign ownership only. Okay? So, nung nag apply So, sabi niya dito, ABC Corporation claims that it has 70 to 30 Filipino to foreign ownership. And this was in fact correct. But further investigation revealed that ABC Corporation is a subsidiary. Okay, so ito na yon. Dito na, okay, ito na yung kumbaga justification kung bakit natin ina-apply yung uh, grandfather rule. Okay, dahil sa mga ganitong instances is a subsidiary of XYZ Corporation with a 60 to 40 Filipino foreign ownership. And furthermore, XYZ is a subsidiary of DEF Corporation with a 59 to 41 Filipino foreign ownership. So, these facts led to the Filipino foreign ownership of ABC Corporation in doubt. So, therefore, i-re-recompute natin kung ano nga ba talaga ang Filipino ownership within ABC Corporation. Okay, at paano gawin ito? Simple lang. Okay? Unahin muna natin sa pinaka taas or pinaka okay, ninuno nung specific corporation na ito. So, ABC Corporation, tatay niya si XYZ at si XYZ ay tatay niya si DEF. Okay? 
So, kaya dyan, kaya actually, kaya na-derive dyan yung term na grandfather rule. Kasi, ginagran, ginagrandfathered natin si ABC Corporation sa kanyang mga ninuno. Actually, pwede pang mag-expand yan for kahit ilang generation. Kunwari, si DEF, may tatay pa ulit, okay? Or may parent corporation pa ulit, o, yeah, ano natin, i-grandfathered natin siya hanggang sa uh, corporation na yun, okay? So, this time, unahin mo natin siya sa pinaka-grandfather. Okay? So, this DEF Corporation, so, kung makapansin nyo, balikan natin yung information. So, DEF, meron siyang, okay, 59 to 41 uh, Filipino foreign ownership. Okay. So, ayan. Madedetermine natin yung talagang Filipino foreign, uh, Filipino equity within XYZ. Ito yung tatay ni ABC, ha? Nandito pa si ABC, di ba? Okay. Ito si DEF. Tatay niya, grandfather niya. Okay? Parang ganun, okay? So, ngayon, bago tayo pumunta kay ABC actually, is i-determine muna natin kung ano yung kay XYZ. Okay? I-determine muna natin kung ano yung kay XYZ. So, uh, 59%, 59% times 60%. So, bakit natin minultiply ulit sa 60%? Dahil 60% po yung Filipino, uh, what do you call this? Filipino ownership within XYZ. Okay? Parang kumbaga, kinukuha natin yung portion ng 60% which will be attributed to foreign. Bakit? O, kasi yung parent corporation niya ay Ito, hindi naman din pure Filipino, di ba? 59 to 41. So, i-multiply natin dyan. At this time, makukompute natin ito. Ito, ito. Okay? So, from the 60% ni XYZ, out of that 60%, 24.6% pala ay foreign. Okay? Foreign. And 35.4% ay Filipino. Okay? So, kapag pinag-add natin ito, o, oh, magkakamap tayo with ito, itong susunod. 64.4%. 6%. At itong 35.3, ito yung Filipino na na-compute natin kanina. Okay? Ito yung 35.4%. Okay? So, balik tayo. This time, aalamin naman na natin ang equity within ABC Corporation. So, gamit yung, ano, gamit itong actual foreign or Filipino to foreign equity ng XYZ Corporation, alamin natin kung anong portion ng 70% ng ABC Corporation ang talagang para sa Pilipino at talagang para sa foreign. Okay? So, ipoprorate lang natin siya using the previous uh, information na na-compute natin. So, that will be, okay, we will come up with 24.78% Filipino and 45.22% foreign. So, therefore, ganito, pag pinag-add natin to, o, meron tayong uh, 75.22 foreign, actual foreign ownership within ABC Corporation and 24, only 24.78% of uh, Filipino Corporation. So, therefore, hindi dapat to i-allow. Okay? Hindi dapat ito i-allow na mag-manufacture ng firearms or to engage in a partly nationalized activity. Okay? Dahil hindi niya naabot yung 60%. Hanggang 24.78 lang. Malayo. Okay? Malayo. Okay? So, ang dami natin combination kanina, pero may shortcut ba to? Yes, may shortcut. Simple lang. Diba? ABC Corporation, ito yung mga uh, Filipino percentages. So, 70 times 60 times 59, we come up with 74, or I mean 24.78 Filipino ownership. And kunin nyo na lang yung ano, complement, 100%, diba? 100 minus 24.78. So, that will be the foreign ownership. Okay? So, very easy. Kanina, pinakita ko lang yung long method para makita natin kung uh, ano ba yung ano, pa paano nga ba talaga yung idea. Okay? Nang pagkukompute. Or pagka-grandfather. Okay? So, that is the grandfather rule. Inuulit ko, ina-apply po ang grandfather rule if meron po tayong doubt with regards to the Filipino to foreign ownership ng isang corporation. Okay? So, next, we will proceed with the corporate juridical personality. So, first question before we, ano, uh, uh, come, uh, pumunta sa mga mas grabe pang topic or I mean yung mga other topics pa. Okay? So, can a corporation become a partner in a partnership? Okay? So, the answer is, general rule will be no, and the exemptions will be, okay, number one, the authority to enter into a partnership relation is expressly conferred by the charter or the articles of incorporation of the cor 
of the corporation. And the nature to be undertaken by the partnership is in line or the same lang, di ba? The same lang with the business of the corporation. Okay? Ito po yung mga exemptions. And if it is a foreign corporation naman, it must obtain first a license to transact business in the Philippines. So, the general answer po natin is no. Okay? Pero may mga certain exemptions. So, this is based from sec opinion ulit. At hindi ko na nailagay yung specific number. Pero siguro magbibigay na lang ako ng link uh, later on sa description. Okay? So, next. Okay. Okay. Di ba, sabi natin, ang corporation ay meron, is, uh, meron siyang separate juridical personality. So, yung uh, separate juridical personality ba ng isang corporation, pwede pa siyang maging liable for torts. Okay? By the way, torts, o oh, balikan natin law and obligations and contracts, uh, meaning, ano yan, quasi-delic, di ba? Quasi-delic. Okay? So, the answer is, Yes, the corporation uh, can be liable for torts. Whenever a tortious act is committed by an officer or agent under the express direction or authority of the stockholders or members uh, acting as a body or generally from the directors as the governing body. Okay? So, yes, ang sagot po natin. If liable ba ang isang corporation for tort. Okay? How about crime? Is a corporation liable for crimes? They are General answer is no, since a corporation is a mere legal fiction. Okay, meaning, artificial being lang kasi siya. Hindi siya pwedeng makulong, <laughs> di ba? It cannot be held liable for a crime committed by its officers since it does not have the essential element of malice. In such case, the responsible officers would be criminally liable. So, instead, yung mga uh, part or yung mga components ng corporation na lang ang mga, parang kumaga uh, magiging criminally liable. However, meron tayong exemption dito. If the penalty is of a crime, of, of the crime is only fine or for feature of the license or franchise. Okay? So, itong exemption na to, may mga crimes kasi na uh, parang kumaga hindi ano, hindi pagkakakulong ang i-impose. Okay? So, in this case, oh, may mga ganong klaseng ano, crimes. Okay? In that case, in those cases, pwede maging liable ng isang corporation with those uh, certain crimes. So, kapag ang penalty lang ay fine or for feature of the license. So, meaning, death of the corporation din to. Kasi for feature of the license na eh. Okay? Ibig sabihin, hindi na pwede mag-operate yung specific corporation na yun. Okay? So, another question with regards to the corporate juridical personality of a corporation. Can a corporation recover damages? Siyempre, the answer is yes. What is the exemption? Moral damages. However, we have an exemption to the exemption. Okay? Is a corporation entitled to damages? The, the, ano, yung general answer natin is no, di ba? However, there is an exemption. The corporation may recover moral damages under item 7 of article 2219 of the new civil code because said provision expressly authorized the recovery of moral damages in case of libel, slander, or any other form of defamation. Article 2219, okay, uh, item, uh, item number 7 does not qualify whether the uh, injured party is a natural or juridical person. Therefore, a corporation or a juridical person can, uh, can validly complain for a libel or any other form of defamation and claim for moral damages. And other... Uh, ano, case dito is when the corporation has a reputation that is debased resulting in its humiliation in the business realm. Okay? So, tatandaan po natin, ang corporation ba pwedeng maningil ng damages? Siyempre, ang general answer is yes. Ang exemption po ay moral damages. And, furthermore, an exemption to the exemption is, okay, ito. Kapag nagsuffer ang, kapag ang ikakaso ay libel slander, or any other form of defamation, or yung corporation po natin ay, yung reputation niya ay na-debase, at siya po ay na-humiliate in the business realm. Siyempre, mawawalan, bababa yung reputation ng corporation po natin. So, those are the cases na pwedeng uh, maningil ng moral damages ang isang corporation. Okay. So, next, punta na tayo sa tinatawag nating doctrine of piercing the corporate bill or uh, piercing the veil of corporate fiction. So, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin na ito? So, a doctrine that disregard the separate personality of a corporation if this separate personality is used as an alter ego 
of another entity and was used, okay? Being the alter ego was used to justify wrong, protect fraud, perpetrate deception, or defeat public convenience. This doctrine may also be used to achieve equity, okay? So, uh, under the doctrine of praising the veil of corporate fiction, okay, may mga instances na pwede nating i-disregard yung separate personality ng corporation from its owners. So, therefore, kung ano si owner, siya na rin sa corporation. At kung si, ano si corporation, siya na rin yung owners, okay? And these are actually the tests, okay, that result from this definition. We have the fraud test, kung ginamit ba yung uh, corporation to uh, perpetrate fraud. Next is yung alter ego or instrumentality test. Ginamit lang ba yung corporation as a mere alter ego of another corporation or another entity. Okay? In order to commit those fraud. Okay? Actually, connected din tong mga tests na ito. Or, it is used for, uh, it is used to defeat public convenience. Okay? Or sometimes, okay, sabihin na ating walang fraud, walang pagde-defeat ng public convenience. Okay? Pero, kailangan, kailangan i-disregard yung separate personality to achieve equity. So, may mga instances na yan. And actually, magbibigay tayo ng link on the description for further reading. Kung gusto nyong uh, mapag-aralan na pala, pero kung accountancy student kayo, ay advise nyo na wag na lang. Okay? wag na lang. Okay? Dahil actually, hindi naman to talaga, hindi naman natin to kailangang pag-aralan in great detail pag accountancy student. Okay? And actually, these videos are for accountancy student. Actually, sapat na na nalaman yung mga, mga different tests na ito. Okay? So, next. Magbigay naman tayo ng example para hindi naman, ano, hindi naman masyadong nakakalito tong uh, concept na to. Okay? So, for example, when, X, when company X is established by company Y to evade taxes, in this case, the courts can disregard the corporate bill of company X and make the true owner, which is the company Y, liable for the legitimate taxes. Kung makapansin nyo, company X, okay, the personality of company X was only used as an alter ego of company Y. Di ba? In order for company Y to, ano, makapag-evade ng taxes. Kasi ang ginawa niya, oh, lahat ng transaction natin, i-record natin kay company X. Okay? Si company X. Si company X ngayon, in this time, pag maniningal na si BIR, hindi siya magbabayad. Okay? Hindi siya magbabayad. Okay? Or, let's say, si BIR, o, oh, alam niyang si company X at company Y, isa lang. Sisingilin niya ngayon si company Y. Okay? Sisingilin ni BIR si company Y. Anong sasabihin ni company Y? Hindi, hindi akong singilin mo si company X. Okay? Si company X ang singilin mo. Okay? Yung mga transaction ay under kay company X at hindi sa akin. Hindi ako yan. Okay? So actually, um, oh, from that fact, oh, ginagamit na si ano, company X as a mere alter ego. Okay? In order to ano, perpetrate the fraud. Okay? Or parang kumbaga, ano to eh, parang, uh, ano ba, yung pag-evade ng taxes against the law. Di ba? Against the law. Okay? At sino ang ano, parang kumbaga, in terms of ano din, isang requisite din, para ma-pierce yung corporate bill is, may nag-suffer ba? Yes, may nag-suffer. Yung Philippine government. Kasi hindi nakasingil si BIR. Okay? Which is, di ba, number one source of revenue, yung mga ano, di ba? Usually, source of revenue to ng uh, Philippines, yung paniningil ng mga taxes. Okay? So, ayun po, yun po ay isang example ng piercing the corporate bill. So, kapag na-pierce po natin ang corporate bill, we will disregard the juridical personality of X and juridical personality of Y. Actually, pupunta na natin yung mga true owners. Okay? Sino ba kayo? Okay? Ayun yung magbayad, ha? Sige. Puntahan natin yung mga owners talaga. Yung mga stockholders, yung mga directors, etc. Okay? So, yun ang mangyayari. We will pierce the bill. By the way, yung bill, pag sinerge nyo yan sa Google, parang yun yung ano, parang yun yung ano, uh, nilalagay sa mukha. Okay? Para hindi makita. Okay, para parang parang mas pero hindi naman talaga mas yung parang tinatakip mo sa mukha para hindi makita yung buong mukha mo mata lang yung nakikita okay so we will pierce the bill para makita mo yung mukha talaga nung may ari parang ganoon okay
So, for now, okay, uh, dito tayo magtatapos sa ating lesson for today. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And <clears throat> don't, don't forget na meron din tayo ano, premium version ng course na ito, which will be released later on. So, sana, uh, at maglalagay tayo actually ng link sa description for more details. Okay? So, our uh, next video will be about capital structure and the organization and incorporation of a corporation. Okay? So, goodbye and thank you.